Is this an opportunity for a different stage of cooperation between tech and government? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, government, you know, it's, it, you have to separate Trump from government in this case, because I think tech, it, it really is moving forward with lo all kinds of parts of uh, the government to try to get information out, to try to minimize misinformation, to get rid of price gougers and things like that, and to provide uh, products. So in that case, in this way, they're, 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 probably, they're working very hard. They met at the White House last week, as you know, um, tech leaders. And there's all kinds of things they can do. Um, you know, I think that one of the things that's critically important to remember here, here is that, you know, when these companies do rise to the occasion, they can do a lot of great things. And they can, again, just for the, at the very base, provide great information for people who are stuck at home or provide great technology. So I do think you'll see a lot more cooperation between these companies. Um, it doesn't, between these companies and the government, it doesn't mean some of these issues with these companies is going away. There were still hearings last week about antitrust. There's still issues around all kinds of issues around big tech. But I think for right now, it will go on hiatus until this, this crisis is over. Mentality-wise, Kara, how do you think, and maybe it's too soon to, to tell, we're still very early days, but how do you expect a, a crisis, a shock like this, to affect the Valley? I mean, we both lived through the, the, the dot-com yeah. bust, which I would argue had a much bigger impact than the financial crisis did on the West Coast. How heavily is this going to weigh based on what happens to valuations, delayed or scuttled IPOs, attitude toward risk? Well, you're going to see the IPO scuttled. I mean, there was going to be Airbnb and others. And I think Airbnb is taking a big hit here with travel and things like that. And so there's probably unlikely or so there's some delay in their IPO. Other companies like Apple, of course, which has, have a lot of retail operations, they're exposed in that way. It's not a huge amount, but it's an amount, including discretionary income spending on things, that they're going to be affected. Um, other companies like Zoom and others that create these products could do really well. Even Amazon with delivery, when people really start to use delivery and start to like it, um, you know, they could benefit when this is over as people begin to change their habits. The other thing is working at home the idea and, and products that help you work at home. You know, people might like this kind of format or get used to it as, as this thing winds down in, in months to come, hopefully. Um, so it depends on what company you are. But in general, I suspect Silicon Valley will be just fine coming out of this um, in terms of the tech tools they, they provide to people and people getting used to living a digital lifestyle. Yeah, Kara, I'm, to that point, um, we've also seen a lot of these big tech companies, Google included, um, making bigger pushes into the healthcare sector as well. And I realize mm -hmm. Verily has been a source of contention and controversy over the weekend, but we are starting to see um, some of those services launch, at least uh, in a very small, limited way, I think, sort in two of, counties yeah. in California. Uh, but how does this propel or maybe even spur faster some of these pushes uh, into this area? Well, they have to. I think it's really clear that some of the part of this is that the healthcare system continues to be problematic for most citizens of the United States, so we can't get things out quickly, and healthcare is not available to everybody. And depending on, no matter what side of this you're on, you want better delivery of healthcare to people. And you can see, like, one of the things uh, we talked about on my Pivot podcast was, what if Amazon was doing the testing and delivery and things like that? What if some of these companies that are really good at logistics get involved in healthcare? Because I think this is an area ripe for disruption, and I think this crisis is going to show people how much this the healthcare area does need to be innovative and to think of better ways to deliver its services to to their to patients and, and others. Hey Kara, you know prior to all this our conversations were often about face true. Yeah, I think it's interesting because Mark Zuckerberg gave a, a very rare interview uh, to Ben Smith of the New York Times today where, of course, it was a little bit of a, lap, a victory lap. They, hey, we're going to take off bad medical information. To me, that's the lowest bar they should reach. They should, this, should be easy, this should be something they do without even pausing, getting rid of bad information on any platform. And so, you know, they, they certainly are, what it does show is they're certainly capable of taking off information and making decisions, editorial decisions about bad information. I think it should apply to everything all year round and not just here, though I absolutely think it should apply here. And they have been moving very quickly um, to give them some credit, but it, also it's what they should be doing in the first place. And so, um, you know, yeah, I think he, they've been very clear that this, they, they think they were calling it a, he was calling it a black and white, an easy black and white decision. Well, it is an easy black and white decision to protect the health of, Ameri of all Americans and people across the globe, but it should be a black and white decision to have uh, accurate information on the platform on any topic all the time. Kara, finally, I want to ask you about events and conferences. Google 
uh, yeah. canceled I.O. effectively. Apple uh, moved WWDC to being digital only. You participate in and, and host mm -hmm. quite a few of these yourself. What do you see happening to those traditional tech gatherings? I don't know. We're going to be delaying ours. We'll be announcing that to first the audience uh, later today, I think, or tomorrow. Um, but, you know, we, we, we think it's really important for the health and safety of not just uh, the people that attend the conferences, but the speakers and our own staff. It's really important to do so. I think they'll come back eventually. I don't think we're going to do all these only digital conferences. As you know, as I said, Silicon Valley is an analog place as much as it is a digital place and a very analog place, actually, compared to many, many industries. And so you're going to see it, those gatherings coming back, and I think it's critically important that people interface and network and know each other. And, uh, you know, life eventually will return uh, to what the next normal, I guess you'd call it. Um, and we all will have some important lessons to learn about uh, about about these kind of crises. But I do, I think they'll eventually return, but not for a while and not, you know, at least into the fall, if not longer.